We didn't know what to do without you last week. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. It was a, it was a uh, planned holiday. No, it was, it was absolutely fine. Just wanted to let, let you know that you were missed. Um, I, I do appreciate that. I had a wonderful 4th of July. I hope everyone else did as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, uh, I went up, Natasha and I went up to the San Juans uh, for, for a long weekend. It was much needed time away. Um, so I understand you have some good updates for us and possibly even a demo. Yes, we do. We have a demo today from Michael Birch, uh, who's going to demo the Node 5 features, some of the Node 5 features. Um, I think everybody will be really excited about that. So yes, I will go ahead and give my update. So we've got Node 6 that is uh, currently in development. Um, those of you that want to understand what the Node 6 scope is, you can go check that out on our wiki. Um, we are going to be releasing our Node 5 release on Monday. We had a very slight delay, about you know a 36 to 48 hour delay because of some uh, uh, bugs that we discovered in the release. So I'll be talking a little bit uh, in a little bit more depth about that. Um, so I'll, you know, I'll just dive right into that. So we found two bugs in the replay, um, our space and um, as part of the consensus testing and our integration testing. So it was really great that I, I tell you background in QA that it's really awesome that we found these bugs in our integration tests. And um, they were not uh, discovered by our end users. And that's exactly what you want to see happen. You want to have um, uh, enough thorough testing such that um, these kinds of issues are discovered well before you launch. So we had a little bit of a delay because we had to uh, ferret those bugs out, identify them, and then fix them. And an allegory to that is we had um, a very good node testing this week. And we were able to confirm, you know, after, as we were doing the triage and, and um, identifying the bug that, in fact, some of the issues that the users had during node testing with blocks being um, uh, proposed and not um, accepted by other nodes was related to this bug. So we saw some weird um, timeouts and uh, um, slow response times when you were attempting to either show a block or propose a block. So it was very interesting how the bug manifested. Um, we are making, um, we're going to be working on some subtle bugs around variable references and locally free. Kyle will be writing this, um, this bug up and fixing it. And we've started full force with our cost accounting uh, implementation. And we've got a first working draft of substitution in the substitution and reducer logic. And um, we're going to be parameterizing these accounting functions so we will be figuring out the relative costs right now. Um, we just have stubs in for that. And we're going to start working on the matcher work. Um, we, um, the issue in consensus was that we needed to evaluate the Genesis block very eagerly. So we've already got a PR in, and we fixed that issue. And um, our integration tests are green now. We're going to start the sharding work next sprint. That's a little later than I would have liked, but um, we also simplified our sharding implementation for cross shard transfers as well. So while we're starting the work a little later, it is uh, simpler and that's good. Um, I'm also going to work with Mike Stay to put out a document around what sharding looks like in the Mercury timeframe. I wanna make sure that everybody's clear on what um, we will be delivering vis-a-vis -vis what we won't be delivering so we can get all, all the companies that will be working with um, both Reflective and our end users and developers, what they can expect in terms of the R-Chain starting solution. Um, storage no team, you know, they triaged a bug in our space. Um, it was a sync bar and exception and Casper has to be eager, already talked about that. Um, the replay bug was, um, was an iterator bug and again, found it with the integration test and we fixed it. We're working on block storage design and we're gonna get that in front of the Casper team so they can review it. And we wanna have an elegant solution for block storage, right? I think we can have an opportunity to do much better than the Ethereum Foundation has done here. So you can run a read-only node and you should be able to quote unquote, query the block storage directly, ideally in Rolang or some other you know, um, nicer language. I don't know that that's what we'll deliver in the short, in, in, in the near term, but that is the ultimate goal. Um, let's see, what else can we talk about? We're working on improving performance in the tuple space. So we're doing some work around serialization and deserialization. And again, that's because we want to get performance numbers as fast as we possibly can. 
for the uh, for the platform. And we're doing some work on cleaning up the communication subsystem. That will probably start next sprint. Um, we've documented the problem here. And we also came away with a supported network configuration. Now, this is really important. Um, if you want to run a validating node, you need to have, um, there needs to be a clear pipeline between the machine that is running the R node software and the internet. And I'm, I'm being, you know, purposefully vague in this in that there are a lot of network configurations that you could set up at your home or, or your uh, data center. But the essence is, is that your node runs as a TCP server. So if you were to imagine that you were running a web server out of your house, what would you need to do to have crisp communication such that you could send messages out, but also support incoming requests? And your network topology has to reflect that. And, um, and we do this so that we can have secure encrypted communications, both incoming and outbound. So there is a document. Um, it's, um, it's, uh, I've, I've got a link to it on my, uh, on my screen here in the community update. So do go ahead and read that document, please, um, around supported network configurations. So if you want to participate in node testing on Tuesday mornings, we welcome you. Please do try to make sure that you've got a solid connection um, to the internet before um, joining the community testing. That way you can focus on the test cases at hand. We had uh, a fruitful node testing. We had about seven to eight nodes connected and the findings confirmed what we observed in integration tests. We were able to do some block proposals um, and we were able to see the blocks and, and, and see the Genesis block kind of in action. So expect next week's node testing to be even better with some of the fixes that Michael Birch has put in. I was able to preview a metrics dashboard for comm events. Looks very nice in Prometheus and Grafana. So we will be uh, scripting that out and making it part of the platform and offering some documentation so that other developers within the uh, development team can create their own metrics for what they need to surface. One of them being, you know, validator signing a Genesis block is an excellent example of a metric that metric that we'll be very interested in come test net launch. Uh, the Roscala team is making great progress. Um, parallel execution, we've got a, a pull request cut for that. We expect to get that merged today or tomorrow. And we're going to be uh, starting some work on performance testing and benchmarking of the parallel execution. We are going to keep a single threaded execution model in the VM just so we have it in our hip in case for any reason the, um, the performance tests seem to not uh, marry out or prove out what we hoped or later on when we integrate the VM into um, uh, as a JIT into the interpreter, we wanna make sure there's no thread collision between if there's any multi-threading in the interpreter or in the node vis-a-vis -vis the VM. So we always wanna keep a single threaded option until we know that the integrated version of the VM is operating correctly with parallel execution. So that's, that feature is going to stay in there for the time being. Um, we're also doing some uh, good work around getting the uh, code in the C++ um, executed where we're, we're working on getting that code running, the um, object code import export. So now we're at the point where we're doing the import and we're trying to run it along with the C++ VM and we're writing documentation as we learn through that process. And we've wrote, written a, an interesting Python script that'll translate Rosette opcodes to Rosette Roscala case classes. So we're using this as a testing tool to make the testing easier. So this kind of a neat piece of work that Tim did. And um, developer.rchain, we're doing some SEO work. So you can take a look in our JIRA. And then again, Archon3 registration is open. Please do register. We still got early bird registrations in before July 31st. So I'd like to turn it over to Michael Birch if there's no questions. Going once, going twice on questions. Okay, that was a mouthful. Michael, if you're there, you have the floor. All right, great. Thanks, Meta. Hey, everybody. So in the dot five release, the Genesis block now has some blessed contracts in it, which is pretty exciting. In particular, it has the rev contract and some wallet related contracts. So I'm going to give a, a little demo showing those in action and we'll take a 
brief look at some of the code involved with that. So I'm going to share my screen here. So does everyone see this? Is the, is the font big enough? It looks good. All right, great. So I've got, I've got the node up and running in the background, and um, I'm, I'm making a deploy command here. And so I'm, I'm deploying this um, little bit of Rolang that I'll, I'll show you in detail later. But it just has a few convenience definitions for, for the demo. Uh, so we go ahead and deploy that. Um, and then for output purposes, I'm going to deploy this little print contract. And for those of you that are uh, familiar with the way this works, right? Deploys are aggregated locally by the node. And then when you propose, it actually goes through and processes those to make a block. Um, and so to see the contracts that I've deployed actually running, I need to make a, a propose. So if we go look at what we've got here. So we see we got some output. Um, so Alice has a wallet with 100 tokens in it. And Bob has a wallet with 35 tokens in it. Um, and the double output here is because of a new feature related to verifying transactions and blocks. Um, so don't worry about the, the doubled output. Just the first bit is, is all we need to, to care about. All right, so that's, that's where we're starting. And so now what we're going to do is um, deploy a transfer of 10 tokens from Alice to Bob. And, and again, I'll, I'll show you what this contract looks like in a little bit. I just want to sort of get the um, final result in front of you so that you can sort of see what the code is actually uh, working towards instead of just looking at it up front. Uh, so again, we're, we're doing a propose here to actually make this transfer go through and, and be processed by the node. And again, for output purposes, we're going to have it um, print the balances for us and propose to make it actually, actually go through. And if we take a look at what we've got, we see now that Alice has 90 tokens and Bob has 45, which is what we expect, right? A transfer of 10 tokens from Alice to Bob would decrement her balance from 100 to 90 and increase Bob's balance from 35 to 45. So it works. Great. <laughs> um, so just to, to round this out, um, I'll, I'll show you what the code looks like. Um, right, so this this little piece here is is a little convenience thing for myself so that I don't have to remember what the address that I assigned Alice was. Um, but you can imagine that uh, if you knew the address, you would just start right away from this line where you would say, okay, get the wallet that's from this particular address. And then what we're doing is uh, withdrawing 10 tokens. Um, this is the nonce, right? So this is the first or a zeroth, if you'd like, transaction on this wallet. Uh, and this big long thing here, this is the signature that verifies Alice is the one wanting to do this transaction. Um, and this is the destination. This is the address that Bob's wallet lives at. Um, so as you can see, it's, it's pretty short. It's basically just one line, um, which is, which is quite nice. Um, I guess as, as another side note thing here that we could try, um, you can imagine that if, uh, you know, this was working correctly, then we should prevent replay attacks. So if some malicious entity tries to deploy this exact same transfer code 
again and uh, propose it again, um, this should fail, right? Because internally, the nonce of the wallet has incremented. And so now it'll see, ah, oh, this nonce is wrong. Um, and so this, this transaction, the second time won't go through. And so if we take a look at what we've got here, we see false has been output. And basically this, this is just telling you that the transfer was, was rejected. It, it didn't go through. Whereas before we had true printed out. Uh, so that's nice. And then just one other thing that I'll point out. Um, if we look at this definitions file that I, I showed you earlier, there's a little bit more code in here, but it's, it's sort of straightforward. Um, it contains this print balances definition, which again, I was just using for you know output purposes in, uh, in the demo. And it, it, again, creates these convenience methods for Alice and Bob's uh, wallet addresses. Um, and I also put in this little convenience contract for Bob to automatically take in the deposit. This is something that ultimately might just exist for all wallets, this kind of uh, deposit forwarder, because it's, it's sort of a, a convenient thing. Um, so probably in, in practice, a user would only need to deploy that one bit of code that I showed you earlier and not really worry about any of this stuff. Um, yeah. Does anyone have any questions? Comments? Could you uh, show us how the signature was created? <laughs> um, well, so the short, the, the short answer is, um, you know, I, I have, Right, so this is this is the public key um, for for Alice. I have written down somewhere what the private key associated with this is, and I know the internal workings of the wallet contract to, to generate the signature from that private key uh, based on the the nonce and the transfer amount. But I don't have a convenience script to quickly generate these things at the moment. So that's a, that's a great point, an excellent question. Um, Certainly in the future, we'll have a convenient script that will uh, generate these, these signatures for, for users to make that process nice and easy. Right well, now, I'd have to boot up the SBT console and pull in yeah. some stuff and yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe then just more succinctly, what is it signing? Like what, what is the data structure that it's actually signing? Oh, sure, yeah, that, that I can answer. So it's signing uh, the triple of the deposit amount, the nonce, and the destination, that triple expressed as a byte array in Rolang's encoding. So this, this enables security um, by like the, the amount can't be modified, the transaction can't be replayed, and the destination can't be uh, messed with either like this this transaction is only valid for this many tokens one time to this particular place so in general are all the arguments uh, signed for all valid transactions for for the wallet withdraw specifically yes all the arguments are used um this is actually as of today the only instance that we're using uh, Signature verification in um, any sort of existing Roland code, but yeah, in general, I would suggest to people writing cryptographically secured smart contracts to sign over all of the arguments that are important, and hopefully, all of the arguments are important. <laughs> cool, thanks. Fantastic demo. Thank you very much, uh, Michael. I really appreciate that. Um, uh, so any other uh, questions or comments about the dev update before we move on? Okay, so it's time to move on. Uh, I'd love to get an update on the business development side. Um, uh, um, uh, ref reflective, would you guys like to go uh, give us an update? 
got a lot of the reflective team here at the R House. So sorry, Greg, that we missed you, but it's the first time that I've been here anyway. It's beautiful. Love the view. Nice work out here. So uh, and as we speak, Rudy is making us all espressos. So uh, <laughs> it is perfect. Um, real quickly, I wanted to, to talk about a few events that are coming. So uh, the first one we have. The R Chain meetup is this evening, and it's in Seattle at our new offices in Center Square. It goes from six to eight o'clock. Uh, it's the same R Chain meeting, I guess, that's been happening every month over in Bellevue. So they pushed it over to our offices. So we welcome everybody to come down. Um, Andrea is going to be speaking uh, from Martin Davis on some tokenomics, some SEC regulation stuff, um, forming corporations, all of that good stuff. Uh, we'll have food and beverages down there as well. So six to eight, you can check out uh, our website or I think it's up on Discord as well, the information for all of that. There is also a meetup, <clears throat> excuse me, is actually happening in Munich um, that Reflective was going to be a part of, but unfortunately we didn't make the trip out to Germany this time, uh, but that is still happening. So I want everybody to be aware of that. I don't know the specific details, but I think they're on Discord as well. Uh, for that. And then uh, something that we're super excited about, we finally got the deal day. Um, all of the logistics, everything is in order. You can go to the reflectiveventures.io website. Uh, we're having open enrollment, as we're calling it right now, for companies to submit. That started on Monday and that goes until next Thursday, the 17th. And at that period of time, we're letting all companies submit online forms through our website. We're hoping to get 15 or 20 uh, companies to choose from, and then we'll narrow it down to the top six to eight. Uh, we're also looking for judges uh, to sit on a panel. We've got Greg committed to be one of those folks. Uh, somebody from Reflective will be on there. We're gonna add two or three different community members. So we're also accepting sort of applications for that as well on the website. Uh, the format's gonna be, um, Pretty slick, we're gonna do 10 minute presentations, five minutes Q and A afterwards. Uh, and then at the end, we are going to the panel, we'll select a winner, if you will. And that winner is somebody that exhibits, um, I guess the, the fortitude to be on the R-Chain platform and be as successful as any of them that we've seen. Uh, and there will be a award of rock uh, at that event as well. We're going to have the room seated with um, quote unquote money. So there will be VCs and angels in the room as well. So we're encouraging people to come to Seattle to present, but Christian's gonna be there live streaming it. So we'll be able to take it from there. Uh, more of those details are coming, but please go check out the website, RSVP. We've only got room for about 50 and I, I think we're gonna fill it up in person, but the rest of you can watch it online. So it's, um, it's the first of many deal days to come. Um, Let's see. I'm trying to think. Is there anything else? I think that's it. I think that's it on our side. So. Greg, I think you're muted. I think actually he dropped from the call. His, his internet was... Uh... Oh. He said it was wonky. I can give our updates. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. We got some really interesting stuff. So we're starting to see a lot more in the enterprise space. And I'll start with something that's pretty cool for the co-op is that I spoke with Forrester, which is one of the two large um, industry analyst groups. So when the enterprise space comes in and says, hey, where should we look? Um, I, they asked for an overview of Pythia, but of course we talked about our chain. So they've asked for not only a briefing from some of our portfolio companies, but they'd like a full briefing on our chain, which is a unique opportunity because this woman speaks to over a thousand companies uh, that are responsible for the enterprise space. So uh, I sent out a note, if we could get Greg or somebody else from the, the dev team, maybe even Nash and Greg, to speak to them, that's gonna be a huge coup because we get to demonstrate uh, you know, where our chain is 
from a delivery standpoint <clears throat> and the enterprise space. So that's number one. Number two, I met with one of the telecom carriers. I can't say which one it is. We are being invited into a working group. They want to see participation. So all the things that we're pushing out to GitHub and doing uh, from an R-Chain community, uh, we'll have the opportunity to participate with them. And they've put together a consortium. So I don't know if Kenny or, or Greg is the best person to follow up on that. But again, there is another uh, huge, huge win uh, for the community. Our Vancouver event is shaping up. We've already got five. I think Tamara just added one more that uh, the local government has set up for us. So if you know of any companies that are in or around the Vancouver, British Columbia area, we'd love to have them uh, participate and we can get them in and they'll get so, some pretty broad exposure. Uh, met with a game company yesterday. They do nine, they're a $70 million company. They do nine billion uh, of their internal token transactions a day. And they're highly interested in the token economics of our chain. So whoever's driving that, I would love to be able to put them together uh, because that would immediately create a lot of you know token flow and liquidity for the organization for them and demonstrate interoperability as well as you know putting a lot of uh, token flow once we go rock to rev so that's you know even if they picked up a fraction of it i think that would be a, an enormous deal uh for the community overall uh we've got a whole host of Companies coming in, we're seeing a lot in the construction industry. We've got one coming in tomorrow. Uh, one that's doing traditional video encoding and is now cannibalizing their existing business to move on to the blockchain. So more on that as it comes. And we've got another company coming in tomorrow that Roland is gonna debrief. If y'all have any questions about this, uh, hit me up on Discord or in the chat, especially if you've got companies for Vancouver or someone from the dev team wants to uh, participate in any of these debriefs. So on that note, I'll jump in here. Can you, everybody, can you hear me? Yes. And so there's actually, we have, Lawrence's um, misspoke just a little bit. We have three companies coming in tomorrow and two companies coming in today. So the one I'm talking about is actually coming in today, not tomorrow. And I find this one particularly interesting. We, I, I may have mentioned a little bit about them before, uh, but it's a young founder out of the Philadelphia area who's been following the art chain effort and reached out to us for the obvious reasons that we all know well of throughput and transparency and cooperative governance, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but, it, you know, a few weeks ago, he was, okay, I'm, I'm going to manage slow growth. And then this weekend, he realized, oh, I have three more opportunities coming from, you know, coming right up, it would be really useful to have a seed round. And so he reached out to me on Sunday. Today is Wednesday. And so four days later, we're getting him in, him in. And if all goes well today, we will get him money by the end of the week. And obviously, we can't promise that kind of turnaround for everybody. Uh, but for our good deals coming through people we know, that is the way we like to act. So, Meta, back to you. Terrific, thank you. Actually, so, I can, oh, I can, Good. thank you. Yeah, thanks for stepping in, Meta, and, and thanks for guys keeping the flow going while my connectivity issues got resolved. Um, very good. Uh, thanks, thanks for those updates. Uh, really appreciate uh, the work that's going on on the business development side. Um, I will say that um, I, I can't, I can't speak too much about it, but I believe we have one of the most significant um, applications uh, to come come out ever. <laughs> um, this is a, a sea change application, and if all goes well, um, they will be demoing at Archon. So book your tickets uh, for Archon because I think we're going to have um, we're going to have a company up on top of our chain that's going to blow away. Uh, 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 literally, just you know, all your conceptions about what you can use the blockchain for are are going to be are going to be blown away. Um, I'm very very excited about uh, 
uh, about about this application and uh, and the um, um, the fact that they uh, they've chosen Archain as uh, the platform uh, to um, uh, to to go to market on. It's very very exciting. I wish I could say more, but um, uh, hopefully uh, in the next couple of days I'll I'll be able to talk about this um, much more openly. Um, so with that, I do want to say, um, uh, speaking to the points about security that were made at the top of the hour, that uh, I spoke um, at length with um, um, the Hacker One representative on Monday, and we are moving forward with a, uh, a first, uh, the, the, their top tier um, uh, engagement. Uh, and so we will be unleashing Hacker One um, against the, uh, the surface area uh, of the node. Uh, and uh, and the network in general, and um, hoping that the, they will be able to ferret out uh, um, more of the bugs and issues that that might be lurking um, there between now and testnet, and then again uh, more aggressively from testnet to mainnet. Uh, so we're we're very excited about this um, this engagement, and uh, and and I you know hope that everyone understands our commitment to. To having the the best quality offering and 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 our commitment to security, so very very um, delighted to have Hacker One on board. Um, uh, and uh, moving on from that topic, we have a couple of other uh, nice nice uh, uh, things to talk about. So it looks like we have um, we've crossed the major milestones with respect to. Um, all of the um, the the uh, things we have to get into in a row in order to uh, have the final documentation for audit and registry for our chain Europe. Um, so we have uh, um, because of the size um, of the uh, cooperative initially, we do not have to have uh, a supervisory board. We'll get that constituted uh, post registration. Uh, we've got the initial um, uh, um, managing uh, directors uh, identified. We'll be talking about that um, in more detail uh, with a, in a, a following hangout. Um, uh, and um, I still owe the community links to the uh, links to the um, uh, the, the um, bylaws, business plan, and finance plan. Uh, there's just this was a back and forth on who had the the um the credentials but we should have those up today um uh, god willing um and and it's probably wise that we uh we waited because uh, the documents went through a couple of revisions and so we want to make sure we get the latest uh, latest and greatest versions of the documents uh into people's hands for review people should be aware uh, again I've, I've said this many times um but we should be uh, people should be aware that um uh, we uh, we are taking an iterative approach. So everything in these documents is all about getting through the audit process. Um, and then once we have gotten through the audit process, um, putting things, uh, you know, to the next level of order uh, so that there's a, you know, a greater articulation of the mission of Arching Europe and its relationship to Arching U.S. So that was a whole bunch of updates, but uh, I uh, want to take uh, questions on on the topics we've covered so far. Any questions from the community? Okay. Just want to make sure everyone can hear me. That silence was delicious, but... Yeah, I mean, I have just one quick question it's related to our chain Europe. Um, will there be... Um, in the pipeline, uh, something like uh, Reflective or Pythia, a venture capital uh, arm set up for the European co-op to do business with, um, because I have certain projects that um, are, they don't want to take investment from US-based companies at all, um, because of the SEC or whatever. Now, obviously those, those sort of sentiments may be quelled uh, if lawyers get into the talks, but I'm just kind of wondering, <clears throat> what the uh, roadmap on that would be if, if there would be a uh, room to set up uh, venture capital arms in Europe. You know, that's such an interesting question because we were recently approached by 
um, some individuals who want to set up a new fund. Um, they want uh, they want to actually get uh, monies in from the wider community and not just our chain, but uh, have our chain participate. Um, and so we're kind of weighing the pros and cons of that. Um, and you know, so this is an interesting take on on um, you know why a new fund because there. You're absolutely right. I know for a fact that Ethereum uh, uh, wanted to be uh, much more uh, circumspect about um, uh, contacts with the U.S. for a number of different reasons, um, and, uh, and and there are a lot of there are a lot of um, individuals and institutions in uh, in and around the world that are less um, you know less likely to want to engage if there is a U.S. connection. It was a it was a pretty big um, step, a bold step for our chain to be a Washington co-op, um, given the, the the sort of the lay of the, the blockchain um, space. So it's a very interesting angle that you're talking about. I, 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 you know, it's it absolutely bears thinking on. Uh, um, well, yeah, very good idea to, to to think through. Hey, Christian, you can also ping me. We joined a global angel network. So they've wanted to do side deals with us. Um, we're waiting for the formal announcement, but what we can do is introduce those people to the network and yours and I think validation from at least the fact that it's coming from this network will be interesting to them. All right, thank you. Uh, thanks, thanks Lawrence. Okay, so uh, I wanna make sure that Patrick is on. Yeah, Patrick's on. Uh, I want to hear a marketing update. What what have we, what have you got for us, Patrick? Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks for that. So I'm also at our house right now with the Reflective team, Deanna and Rudy. Um, okay, so first of all, we've started to move to Jira to sync with uh, development. It's not. It'll take some time to be fully visible on that and have all the team onboarded. But we have started our project management in Jira. Um, on the Gervin front, they have sent um, initial drafts of logo concepts and some of the styles associated with that. The next round of feedback will be given on the 17th. And then from there, we'll move into brand identity. Um, that uh, The goal of that is to get delivered by the end of the month so that we can have all the style guides ready for um, the delivery of the assets, like a new website, uh, pitch decks, and all of the other collateral that goes with um, that requires graphic design. Uh, the product marketing team has neared completion on the messaging and value propositions framework. I shared some of that with the community. We would really like uh, feedback in, in that. I created a Google Doc in um, the channel branding and value propositions messaging. If you could just add some of your ideas on like taglines or header images, or not, excuse me, not header images, but headers and descriptions, that will help the team um, better understand what the community thinks and how they would explain our chain. But that's moving forward uh, very, very nice. Uh, in parallel with the Gerben work, the resurfacing of the website has begun. So we've staffed a web designer, we have a project lead, and then we have two other individuals tasked for that. Um, that's Again, that's a big push to get it out by Berlin, but we're confident we can do that. On that front, the blog is also up. Uh, well, it's, it's not launched yet, but it's going through the final touches and should be launched by the end of the week. Uh, after that, we'll have a cadence of articles from two to three per week, um, ranging from semi-technical content, technical content, and then more like announcement-related posts. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Uh, right after the blog cadence is done, we will begin the influencer outreach program, larger influencers as well as smaller micro-influencers. So anybody in the community that has connections and wants to do, you know, um, articles, social media campaigns, um, interviews and things like that, reach out to me uh, on Discord. We are also on that front, we're in the process of finalizing an agreement with the inblock.io team to do European outreach. Um, we love their enthusiasm uh, and evangelism and the work that they've already done with meetups in um, Amsterdam. So we want to continue that work. Uh, our events coordinator has um, drafted and, or excuse me, yeah, drafted and we are going to finalize an ambassador program for university students. Um, obviously, we want to get our chain um, educated in uh, universities as much as possible. 
We are waiting uh, to finalize this e-learning proposal as well. Um, so we want we have a roadmap to de develop a curriculum, but it's going to take some a balancing act to figure out how to best use the subject matter experts' times because we have a lot of initiatives going on. So it's um, I we have a couple meetings to strategize how to do that, but that's that's also in the in the um, in the pipeline. Let's see. Yeah, we're uh, we're planning and prioritizing the conference circuit also for evangelism through uh, the rest of 2018 as well as 2019. Um, so that that should be exciting. One of the first conferences that we're attending is Open Co-op Movement. Um, a lot of people know that we're we're deeply involved in platform cooperativism. Cooperativism. <laughs> uh, so that's going to be an exciting one. Oliver has done. Um, Great work in in kickstarting that initiative. Uh, I believe Ian Bloom will be there. So, um, yeah, that that's going to be really fun. We will have a Q and A coming out hopefully by the end of the month um, on their site as well. Let's see. Uh, we are in the process of onboarding one or a few developer units that will actually um, they'll work on the on you know the platform in in an open source manner, but they'll also be tasked to develop uh, educational content to help us optimize our developer onboarding experience. That's the biggest need right now, especially as we scale so that um, we're not constantly bugging uh, core dev while they work. Um, a couple meetings lined up this week on that front. Um, let's see, uh, synced on, with PowerFX on rock to rev communication strategy. There'll be more updates on that shortly. And then, uh, Finally, although not really, um, we will um, hear with, at our house with Deanna and the Reflective team to talk about how to ramp up the validator onboarding program. Um, yeah, I, I'll cut it off there. Anybody can reach me at Discord. Uh, if you have like uh, specific tactical ideas on marketing, we would love to get the community involved as much as possible. I'm Patrick727 on Discord. Uh, and yeah, and then I'll also, um, I want to do these updates weekly. So. Uh, thanks for giving me this space, Greg. Oh no, thank you. Yeah, it's it's really good to see all the all the efforts underway, I, and I really appreciate it. Um, we have, you know, we're we're executing now um, in such a way that you know we should feel really good about spreading the word, getting the message out. This is uh, people really need to hear about what we're doing, hear about this work. You know, I think uh, constantly. Well, what we hear about when people come in contact is like this is. This is the best project I've never heard of. <laughs> so we, we really need to get uh, get, the, get the word out. Uh, we are, we're continuing to bring on more people. Uh, we have uh, um, uh, Fabian Al-Sultani has joined the BizDev uh, group. Uh, uh, Fabian, why don't you introduce yourself? He seemed to have dropped off about 15 minutes ago. Oh, sorry. Well, he was on for a while. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, he'll, he'll rejoin, uh, uh, in, uh, next, next time. Um, Fabian is, uh, well connected in, in LA in uh, a lot of different industries, but especially in the, the music industry. Um, and, and that's great because, uh, some of our partners, as you may know, um, uh, including resonate are, uh, are, um, uh, you know, well positioned with respect to the music and, and these kinds of contacts are, are, are quite helpful. Um, so we also have a special guest on today. We have Alex from CCN who, um, they're doing some interesting, uh, work with respect to carbon extraction. And I was, uh, hoping that Alex would be able to introduce himself. Alex, are you still on the call? Yes. Hi. Hi everyone. Uh, hi Greg. How are you? Good, good. And yourself? Good, good. Okay. So I'm going to introduce myself. Well, guys, I'm in Paris right now. I'm French, okay, but I'm based also in the U.S. So just to get, to let you know a little bit, as Greg said, we're into carbon capture and neutralization, which means we're capturing CO2 emissions and we're processing them into a biomass and from which we obtain crude oil and 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 also all sort of types of applications in the medicine, in the food industry, in the pet industry, in the cosmetics. And uh, the main goal here with the blockchain is uh, we're producing, like as we call, a green energy. 
because we're neutralizing CO2 and we're getting those carbon credits uh, from the United Nations for neutralizing CO2 from the big emitters. And, you know, as you know, you guys know better than I do, like uh, Bitcoin and all these guys, you know, they, they, they need so much energy, which represents in those days like uh, just Bitcoin, the energy of Ireland. And they're going somewhere like Iceland because it's fresh and to, to, to have a better, uh, how do you call it, um, refrigeration system to, for, for, for the blockchain. But on the long run, uh, the people which were involved in the climate change, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's bad in few words. Okay. So uh, the main purpose here, uh, and thank you to Greg like, to introduce us, uh, we're based in the US. We've developed a few patents. I know we want to grow the business on 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 an industrial scale. Awesome, and and Alex, I, I think there's a there's a uh, there's a lot about your proposals and ideas that are quite interesting in in terms of the way you you um, you talk about connecting your um, technology to to sort of the big emitters, but also to um, to uh, city and or municipal infrastructure uh, that I found very compelling. Um, oh, it's also, uh, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of work to be done around uh, tokenizing um, this approach. And I think, you know, carbon credits is really just a first approximation. There's probably a lot more that can be done here to use the dynamics of uh, uh, token economies uh, yes. to, to, yeah, to, to really incentivize the kind of behaviors that we want to see. Um, and so I'm, I was, I was really, I was delighted to to see your work and I, I'm hoping that, uh, that you'll, um, that you can, uh, speak with, uh, Greg Heiss and, uh, and, and Lawrence, uh, and see if there might be some opportunities for CCN to, uh, thank you very much, Greg. Thank you very much. No, of course, of course. Thank I, you know, this is the community. Thank you very much. Yeah, no, it's, it's great to, ha great to have you here and, and to hear about the work that you're doing. It's, it's, a, it's an exciting, it's an exciting approach and, and it's the kind of, it's the kind of work that we need to be doing more of. <laughs> yeah. Good. So, uh, so that's a lot of information. Let me. Um... Yeah, actually, hang on, Greg. Can I jump in here for a second? Yeah, sure. Because uh, I want to talk about my. So this is Roland Waters from Pythia, and my wife actually here at University of Washington in Seattle hmm. uh, started and runs an organization through the university called the Carbon Leadership Forum. And that's what originally attracted me to our chain was her colleagues uh, were, oh, you know, the only way we can track carbon through this supply chain is with blockchain. So I'd love to reach out to you after that and talk to talk with you about the work that she's doing and anybody else who's interested in carbon in that. Um, let's, by all means, put together an interest group within the community uh, to be pursuing that. Great. Yeah. Yeah, so so you and Alex should, you know, um, you know, message each other contacts so you can take a step forward. Alex Roland works with Pythia, which is one of the um, uh, uh, venture funds in uh, uh, in our chain. So okay. okay, there you go. I will forward my contact. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Sweet. Uh, okay, so we've had a ton of updates here. It's a sort of head spinning. <laughs> um, and yet, uh, I think we have covered just about everything that was on my list. Was there anyone else that we want to hear from the bounty uh, team? Alan? Yes. Hi, Greg. Um, we started uh, in beta our worldwide community forum. Um, the aim of this is to bring our people together worldwide and allow for language groups to talk to each other and see what each other are doing. And I'll post the link to that. Sweet. I very much appreciate that. That's awesome. Any other updates uh, on the bounties? Uh, that's the main one for now. Thanks. OK, cool. Uh, any other updates or questions, comments uh, that we need to touch base on? Or are we actually able to get out of this uh, before the top of the hour? Um, may I speak a moment about the incentivized test that, um, please, yeah, Philip, absolutely. Yes. So, um, here, here's Philip. Um, 
So as Meta and Greg mentioned earlier, so testing is super important and to deliver a robust and, and, and stable system. Um, and to that end, um, the test and launch in um, in September at Arcon 3 will be in, will be an important step forward. Um, my task for the next week will be to organize and coordinate the efforts for the incentivized test net. And I use the term incentivized, but what does it mean? Um, blockchains uh, lie not only in the, in the domain of distributed systems, but also in the domain of behavioral economics. And um, therefore, I think it is beneficial to create an, an, an environment for the test mode that is closest um, to this uh, economic model and um, to the, so to speak, wild west um, of the mainnet. Um, so that, so we, we, we came up with the, um, the plan to incentivize particip participation in this uh, test net in a competition-like uh, fashion, um, similar to the, to the test net, the Ethereum um, team had, the Ethereum Olympic test net. Um, so the plan is um, that we will have, uh, we will set um, various kind of challenges for each R-chain component um, that will put heavy load um, on the network and try to break things uh, from different angles. Um, just think of it as uh, one simple sound challenge uh, in, in, in the category. Transaction activity, for example, could be uh, um, the, the person uh, with the most transactions or, or something like that. Um, so overall, we can expect that this uh, incentivized test net increase overall robustness, stability, uh, and security, as um, as well as improve user experience, um, documentation, and um, will help also with uh, marketing in terms of developer outreach, well data onboarding, uh, and user adoption. Um, so I've put forward um, a draft uh, for the purpose, goals, and value proposition. Uh, strategy paper for the incentivized testnet. Um, I would highly appreciate um, some feedback um, from the community on that. Um, I'll just uh, put the link to the document in the chat and on Discord. And yeah, happy to be uh, on board and help navigating uh, uh, this flight uh, to Mercury. <laughs> awesome, very good. You actually reminded me of another, of another update that I wanted to um, mention. Uh, we are going to um, roll out um, uh, a draft of the validator prospectus to a focus group of validators. Um, and so um, those parties that want to be engaged in, the, um, in that focus group, uh, please uh, message me on Discord uh, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll take a, a, a selection from, from those parties. Um, and this is, uh, this is the week of the 26th, um, uh, we'll be, uh, we'll be, um, um, have a draft of the prospectus that we will sort of test drive in front of, uh, validators and get feedback to make sure that the, um, the, the economics are, um, in, uh, you know, sort of, uh, in alignment with their expectations and, and their, their, their goals and, and, and wishes. Um, to that end, also, we have uh, reached out to an uh, so absolute stellar researcher in, um, in Singapore who is uh, taking a look at it from the game theoretic and, uh, and economics point of view, um, just to make sure that uh, we've, we've thought about it from that angle as well. So we're getting, already getting good feedback uh, from that direction. Um, and... Uh, I should also mention, uh, so people remember, uh, there was a lot of good, good work uh, going on with the H3Uni people at the Governance Forum. So um, they're rolling out a program, sort of organization-wide, co-op-wide, um, to make sure that we sort of have a, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, we're, we're sort of that we get towards that that kind of uh, intuitive um, um, operation that you see with like a, a great uh, band on stage, you know, where they seem to be reading each other's minds or a great sports team where they seem to really be in the flow and reading each other's minds. So H3Uni uh, is, has got a program that they're calling the uh, uh, attunement workshop. So there's a series of 
a series of conversations um, that they're going to be having with various co-op members uh, via Zoom and then culminating in an in-person event in August. Uh, I'm headed off to the H3 Uni uh, offices in Scotland uh, for a week to make sure that uh, all of all of that's uh, laid out, um, uh, uh, you know, in a way that's going to best suit the co-op's needs. Um, and then we'll roll out that program. Um, and uh, actually, some of those conversations are are underway even now uh, with uh, with some of the team. So um, I'm very very much looking forward to this. It, you can think of it as a follow on to um, some of the issues that were that were raised in the uh, in the governance forum, and, uh, and 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 you know taking those issues seriously, and um, yeah, just just making sure that there's a there's a flow within the organization. Uh, so um, look look for that as well. And I think with that, um, I really all, am at the end of my list of updates. <laughs> um, anything else anyone wants to touch on before, uh, before we call it? Uh, yes, Greg, this is Jonathan. Yes. Uh, so to follow up on your comment about Georgios here in Singapore, he and I have been talking about his developing a capstone curriculum for Rolang and Archin and coming up with a set of uh, uh, educational modules for Arch Art for Rolang as well as coming out with a discrete deliverable from the capstone project. So I've gotten approval from Encore for a budget for that. So. George Jost and I will be working on that in the coming weeks for presentation to the Capstone Committee at Singapore University of Technology and Design. And another Asian update. Today in the community meeting, um, Will Q and I both commented on how challenging it is for people in the Asian time zones to participate in regularly scheduled arching community activities and meetings. So we're going to be forming a Asian community meetup on Tuesdays, uh, Singapore time, 1 to 2 p.m., which is 9 p.m. Pacific and 7 a.m. Berlin. So those of you who are want to join in can. It'll be plausible. But we want to make sure that all of the pent-up energy and enthusiasm for our chain has a community forum around here. Awesome. That's great news. Ian, uh, are you are you admin? Uh, who who posts the uh, Zoom meetings IDs in Discord? There's a Discord uh, channel where it has weekly meetings. This is going to be a Zoom meeting, right, John? Correct. All right, cool. Yeah. So, Ian, if you're on the call or whoever has admin access, get with John so we can get that. Like, because that's going to be a really big development. I'll do that. Uh, absolutely, Christian. Are you supporting that? Oh yeah, I'll support that. If uh, I can wake up at nine, that's fine. I, I don't just keep moving forward. Let's do it. Um, and speaking of which, in the Asian uh, territories, is anyone going to be in uh, Korea next week or the week of the sixteenth through the twenty second? No. Okay, just checking because uh, there's some big developments going on out there. Uh, those two weeks, two huge conferences in Korea. So. Um, I've potentially been invited. I want to clear that with Greg. Uh, Greg, if you can talk like tomorrow or Friday, or yeah. even before, I guess we have a weekly staff meeting, so we I can get all the details by Friday. Um, Perfect. Because, I mean, you know, it's just huge developments in Korea as, as we speak, so. Understood, yeah, yeah. It seems like a great opportunity, for sure. Awesome, yeah, so, so Jonathan, can you work with, uh, 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 sorry, bad echo. Can you work with Christian to set up the, uh, um, the the call so that it can be recorded and and uh, 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 live streamed and released on the uh, YouTube channel? Absolutely, fantastic, sweet. With uh, on that note, um, look forward to uh, talking to everyone next week. Thanks for coming. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Bye-bye.